Hey guys, it's Cameron Belt, and I'm here with one of my good buddies, J.R. Mounts, also known from what I've heard as the pickle guy. <laughs> adult movie uh, moments. Sorry? That's just from my adult movie moment career. You're adult. <laughs> yeah. There are places I can't go because of my moniker, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> now, so why did they call me the pickle guy? I think we should let them wonder for a bit, and then we'll get, we'll uh, get into. It. <laughs> huh? All we got in this like this jars of pickles throughout his yeah, house. Yeah. He just he just eats pickles. <laughs> pickles everywhere. Well, now you should be the first get mail. You guys should see what I'm looking at. It's just pickles. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, so Jr. So we met. Um, backstory, but Jr. and I met at a uh, Comic Con. We were. I remember. I felt sorry for the guy that was in between us because <laughs> we were a booth apart and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like explain. You were wearing a big blue tick suit, if you remember. Yes, yes I was the tick. Yeah, oh, and uh, I'm a huge tick fan. Yeah, yeah, and then and then I I'm looking over and I see this big like detective pickle, and I'm like, what the heck is this? I have to know. <laughs> so yeah, and and I remember I remember you were like, oh, I gotta get a picture of you, and. And I remember, you know, being like, what the heck is this pickle? And, and, uh, and I, I remember you telling me, do you know Sin City? Do you know VeggieTales? There you go. That's what it yep. is. Yeah. I told you, hey, man, pickle in the trench coat. You say Sin City meets VeggieTales, and it usually describes everything for everybody. You say it's about a... Pickle named Q Cumberson who fights meatheads, melonheads, eggheads, and potato heads in a seedless city called the Pits. You know. <laughs> and they either stick around with their jaws dropping, like, what the heck is this? Or they leave going, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to be sure. <laughs> it's I, yeah, but I, I remember just being like, like, because there, there's a lot of independent people at, at Comic Cons. Oh, and please. and uh and you know i know that's one of our frustrations is there's also a lot of fan art and and one of the huh a little there's a little bit of fan art yeah 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 <laughs> explain the percentages there's about 99% of stolen licensed fan art right the rest is guys like me and you yeah no that's true <laughs> That's true, and I even feel I even feel guilty when I when I draw my own fan art. I'm like, this isn't my idea. <laughs> yeah, but but let's 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 define fan art, right? You're a fan of something, and because mm -hmm. we are, you know, we grew up trying to draw all of our favorite characters in the beginning. That's how we learned the muscle memory to draw, and then we honed our skills as we found out there was a method of formula, a way to do things, and you got to hone your own style. And then you start drawing these things because you love them. That's what fan art is really about. It's about an artist's interpretation of a character they absolutely adore. And here is my homage to them. What it isn't is people will buy anything. So Deadpool is out this week. So let me draw Deadpool and make a hundred bucks. Yeah. That's what. Oh. And it's unfortunately sullied the the name of fan art um, because. You know, look, I don't, I don't hate fan artists. I don't hate fan art. I'm doing some of my own right now just because I love it. Mm -hmm. But when you start mass producing it and selling something and making something, uh, making money off of someone else's idea without giving them a touch or, 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 or having to pay dues on that, then mm -hmm. yeah, I have a problem. But uh, for myself, you know. Again, we grew up drawing these things, right? You know, and that was the same thing as a musician. You know, I always wanted to play ACDC and Kiss and Randy Rhodes, and I wanted to create these things. But when I realized it was just pressing chords, 
but then you realize I can do the same thing too. I can make yeah. my own music. And making my own music was a way of paying tribute to my heroes by trying to write something as good as what I heard. Same thing with an artist. I wanted to draw something that was as good as something that inspired me, and I wanted to create a new character because at one point, Spider-Man was was new. You know, Harry Potter was new. Hellboy was new. The Tick was new. These yeah. were all at one point independent ideas that took off. And I thought, you know, well, why not me? I'll, I'll add my thing to the pot and if nothing else because we can at least self-publish. I'll put my own stuff out there. And, you know, I now have a few Pickle fans. Yeah, you know? yeah. But, yeah, it's like, but that's why I'm saying, like, when you and I met, we were going to see a fan art. And mm -hmm. I can't do fan art and sell it whether I'm good at it or not because I just, for me, I, I like the challenge of creating something new. I, I'm also more passionate about the things I create personally. I love my pickle more than I love Daredevil or the Tick even. And I want to put him next to those characters and stand by them. And the reality is most independent stuff sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and that's, and that's, that, it's true. I, I, uh, you, you go to Comic Con. If you've never been, you need to go. But it, you, you go to Comic Con and you see all these booths and they have <clears throat> like just stacks of crap on them. Like, like <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, you, 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 you give it a chance because I mean, me like, I, 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 it's hard to call myself an independent artist because I only got one book out right now. But man, it's like it's like J.K. Rowling. I only got one, one, one book, dude. You only need one book. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So okay, well, as an independent artist, get the tattoo. It's official. Yeah. <laughs> uh. No, you see other people and, and you go, you know, I want to give them a chance because I would want to be given that chance. So I'll, I'll look at their stuff and I'll, and I'll go, you know, is this, is this cool? You know, and most of the time it's not. And I think that's, that's why you stuck out because, and it could have just been me, but like, I just love the quirkiness and and not and not just uh, like cucumbersome is my favorite, but I love all this stuff. You know, like like it's all it's it's just very. It it almost reminds me of like it's like um it's like the fun of of a newspaper cartoon. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. You know, and and it, but but you, you have a story with it. You know, like it. There's, there's some meat to it, or vegetables, if you will. <laughs> 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 Plenty of meat. There you go. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take. That. That's kind of. I mean, I created the series Fried Pickle Noir again to challenge myself as an artist, right? To do something is hopefully as good as something that's out there. To show people that there are new things and at the same time because i know that a lot of independent artists don't put the work into their own creations as much as they would when they as if they were drawing batman or their mm -hmm. fan art you know so the, the issue with uh, a lot of independent work is they do the the fan art because it's easy because they have muscle memory they've been driving these drawing these characters so long um and then they they switch hats by saying I'm going to create my own character, and they forget to put the amount of work into their own character that made Batman interesting. Mm. You know, you can draw Batman any way at all, and someone will still buy it, right? Yeah. But you put a pickle out there, and it's got to be, it's got to be as good as anything you all, you you put out there because you got to love it first of all. You got to mm. love your creation. I love your book, dude. I I think it's absolutely fantastic. And I think it's as good and better than a lot of stuff that is out there. And it's as good as anything you were emulating that was your inspiration. I think Listen is just a fantastic book. And it looks fantastic. Well, the fact that it's also a surprise. Because the best thing about independent characters is that 
you have no idea how it's going to go. It is unpredictable, right? You might be able to predict how it starts or what mm. the nature of the book might be, but you have no idea how it's going to end. You know in every Batman book he will not die. So I don't think <laughs> it's against Killer Croc, and he's underwater, cased in cement. Something's going to wiggle out of his bat belt, and he's going to get out because we need to issue, issue 752. Okay? We know <laughs> Right. But <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, you know, he listen could have come up against an evil speaker and blown him to bits. I don't oh. know. You know. And that could be a sequel. Anyway. But, you know, <laughs> I did with with the characters in Fried Pickle and Noir, too, for myself, is that nobody knew where this was going to go. You add the puns, you know, you add the the shtick. And you know, so you, you realize it's a humor book. But the idea is you and I have to write the stories as if they were they were true as if they were real i'm writing a crime story and then i add the humor to it but it's yeah. got to play by all the rules if you're going to write a children's book it's got to play by the rules and make it feel like a children's book you're not going to go mm -hmm. do use a boob shot in a children's book because that's yeah. not that it. Yeah. yeah so so you have to know your audience and the problem is with with independent art we don't know who our audience is yet mm -hmm. we know who's audience right we know even if we did a hardcore batman you know, we know who those audiences uh, are, are with with something like like listen or or anything I'm doing right now. We have to pull people in by being as good as anything that's out there and trying to figure out a way to, to make us stand out. I have a giant pickle in a trench coat because people go, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> you know, and I, I I've got a banner, fifteen feet tall, right? Fifteen feet tall, mm -hmm. and that's before I I hoist it, right? Yeah. So you can go four aisles away and see this giant pickle smoking a corn cob <laughs> and going, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I love that because that's the whole nature of independent work. I want people to go, I want, I got, you know, I, I'll buy this Batman in a second, but I, I got, I'll be right back. What is that? I got to figure out what that is. And that's mm -hmm. the nature that I've been trying to reproduce in all of my work. I want that feeling in everything I do. I want someone to look at that and go, how good is that? Uh, is it good? Is it something I like? Is it not something I like? The, the the trick is that I can't be lazy. As bad as some of my earlier stuff was, that was the best I could do at that time. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to figure out what is my best. And Because, let's be honest, I suck. I mean, I'm okay. I'm okay. But I'm still trying to do things I'm not capable of doing. And the fact that I'm trying makes the work honest, and it, and I don't do anything that I don't love. So even in if I'm doing like a my rendition of Smog or or, yeah. or Godzilla or whatever, I'm doing it out of love, and I and I take the time. If I'm writing a pickle book, I am laughing till I cry because I am loving this story. Right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And I cry when somebody I didn't want to die has to die. You know, oh. I have to sacrifice. I have to sacrifice the, the grape because he needs to be turned into wine i have to do this this the story calls for me you know <laughs> so but I, that's what i love about being an independent artist we can do whatever we want but we gotta be really good and yeah. we've got to be able to stand by this our, our each time we do work and go this is the best i can do because people know laziness they can also sense when you're when you're mm -hmm. doing nothing uh, you're just whipping it out. That's why I hate so much fan art these days. It's because no one's doing anything interesting with it. I'm not yeah. seeing an interesting take on Batman. I'm seeing someone who light boxed, you know, Heath Ledger, and in, in, in a scene that everybody has seen before. They mm -hmm. paused the scene, they traced it out, and then drew it because they knew everybody will buy this. Or they they took the one favorite meme and they just said, "Oh, I'm going to do my my Joker, and my Batman too." No one's doing mm -hmm. anything good or interesting with this fan art. Which is why it sucks. I'm mm. gonna put it on metal. Who cares? <laughs> it's metal. That's the only difference. Is now I can recycle your stuff. <laughs> I, <clears throat> I <clears throat> no, I totally agree. And I, I don't. I wanna. I wanna say. I don't. I don't think you're bad. Like I. I, I like your stuff. You know. You. you you can tell in your drawings that one, it's your stuff, which I love 
because because for me and I've been told otherwise but in my head I'm going I don't have a look and 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 I disagree with that you have a look okay well that's I that's what I'm told I can't I can't see it but I'm gonna go with it keeps you honest good all right in your mind you don't have a look but I'm telling you as a fan you do have a look the fact that you don't know it is just cute <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But 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 I like I look at your stuff and I go oh Jr like like I'll be scrolling through you know Instagram or Facebook and yeah. I'll just automatically know that's yours you know like yeah. you know that's like good. yeah yeah and 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 I don't know either. yeah well because it I mean it is it, like like you have you have this I mean it depends on the drawing I guess. But I feel like it's this overall like it's a fun look, you know. It's it's like it 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 reminds me. Um, I know I use this already, but it it does. It reminds me of like like almost like a what family circus or you know like like it it it, it I love it. Like well, I am a cartoonist. That that's the thing I embrace the most is that um. In my art, if there's anything, even while I'm doing fan art, I haven't done the pickle book in, in a couple of years now. Mm-hmm. I've done other stories, but I've switched to watercolor and black and white art, mainly because I want to tell different stories. I love telling stories. And, mm-hmm. you know, the pickle reached a point where people bought it only so much, and but I needed to find other ways to supplement my, my work. And mm-hmm. how do you do that when you've been writing stories all this time? So mm-hmm. I want to test myself. And it always seems to happen. Whenever I get at a point in my, my I'll call it a career. Okay, we'll say that. I, when, each time I got at a point in my career where whatever what I was doing was not selling, I'd get pissed off and I'd get frustrated yeah. with myself, like, oh, man, I was supposed to be the scary tales guy, kids and monsters. I was supposed to be the scary tale guy. And then, you know, you get pissed off and you're like, Oh, you're drawing this pickle character. And you're like, you're like, Oh, Bright Pickle Noir starring cucumbers and he fights me here, spit ahead, smell ahead. Oh, he fights oh, you know. Then the fire kicks in, and that, and then I thought I was going to become the pickle guy, which I was for a long time. Yeah, pickle guy was what got me through. But after a while, when the pickle stopped selling, I started getting really worried about like, what the heck am I going to do? I am losing so much money to fan artists, mm-hmm. and, and people started to do their independent work, but they kind of tapered off after a while. And I think because individual work is very hard, it, mm-hmm. it's very yeah. hard not make more than a percentage of any fan artist out there. You know, when I got a friend complaining, I only made five grand at this at this show. I'm like, <laughs> kind of like thirty two dollars, which didn't cover my four hundred dollar table. I'm like right. how, did you say thousand? <laughs> <laughs> I realized I'm in the wrong game. And you know, I'd always get told well if you did fan art you would make more money. Mm-hmm. And my point was is that I don't want to do fan art. You know, fan art is is it's it's not something I'm interested in. It wasn't something I could even think about doing. Like, what's my angle? I'm working on my story. I draw the fried pickle because no one's done him before. Mm-hmm. And I liked knowing that I was doing something that was my own. But as the pickle start, started dropping, I thought, oh, well, I can start creating stories for myself. I do a couple of independents, you know, a, single, a couple of one-shot stuff. And they did okay on the Kickstarter, you know. But there was nothing that could sustain me. So I thought, well... Let's let's switch to something else. And again, I was pissed off, and I started drawing this this puppet on a bed. And uh, oh yeah, <laughs> so thinking of like Sesame Street, right? I started yeah. doing this puppet on the bed, like sprawled out and with the googly eyes, you know, and in no no legs, of course, you know, the whole yeah. showing. And I showed this hand in the shower, <laughs> in the shower, the silhouette of a hand taking a shower, and I called it puppet show, you know, just like <laughs> it's funny. Because I thought, well, kids, they just they think the hand is alive when it's in the puppet. I yeah. thought, well, what the puppet is after a long day, takes his clothes off, goes to the shower, and starts showering off, you know, it's called a puppet shower. Lady walks by and goes, uh, oh, that is creepy. And the next guy walks by, that is hilarious. So I thought, creepy and hilarious. Mm-hmm. All right, then I got something. And I thought, okay, so maybe I can start telling these these gags. Or these one-off stories in one one page, and I thought, well, let's let's watercolor. Since I watercolored my last book, 
let's watercolor each page and let's try something different. And each time I was trying to use the same tools that I put into Fried Pickle Noir or Scary Tales or Silver Linings and thought, okay, I'm limited now to one page, one image. And I'm not a cover, cover artist, but I need to tell a story. What is going on here? I want people to look at it and then be able to come back to look at it. And yeah. see what's going on here. That's why I put the wedding ring on the table. My original thought was I'm gonna put a, I was going to put a G-string in the middle of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, yeah, I, I didn't go for that. You know. <laughs> but that started other images. You know, I started drawing, you know, like uh, other images, like, you know, the Halloween family, pumpkins, you know, looking for heads to scoop out, you know, for their head lanterns. Yeah. You know? and so this odd, quirky style started coming out. And I was very happy with that. And then again, that sustained me for another year. You know, mm -hmm. that that people started buying the actual art. And uh, that was again, it was, it was, it felt great because as you know, when you're doing one piece of art, you just feel so good finishing that thing. It takes a mm -hmm. lot to do, you know. Yeah. 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 And, but to finish one piece at a time, I thought, okay, well, this is a little easier. Maybe I'll start adding prints to my repertoire. But again, I would not do fan art. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But I digress. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's one thing that I I I really appreciate like about you is is, and that I've I've really like. I consider you as as one of my influences because, like I I watch you and and I I see you you know you you go from one thing to another like. You know, I you've been very honest on uh, I've seen on social media about the struggle, and and uh, but you always push and keep going with your art, like like I for me for me I would be like I mean I am like I'm I'm trying to get in into it you know like i'm trying to trying to get a flow going and um you've seen me post on instagram is fantastic it's just well ridiculous. thank you <laughs> color is hard man <laughs> the guy who draw black and white all his life right yeah <laughs> color makes me wet my pants i'm like ah, i just i don't I, I think this is gonna be crap i know it's gonna be crap oh man it's scary i i've been doing this new thing have you it, You've seen the like the poor paintings, right? So I've been.